So the U47, uh, when it was released right around 1950, was the pinnacle of performance uh, in the condenser mic realm. The bandwidth, the sensitivity, the uh, tonal quality, and the detail of the U47 was uh, to a level that hadn't been seen previously when it was released. So a lot of people ask what a U47 sounds like, and uh, the U47 is unique in tonal quality for a few reasons. The acoustic structure of the windscreen is integral to the, the sound of the design, um, as is the tube, the VF14, uh, as is the, uh, the transformer, the BV08, and lastly, but having the most influence is the capsule, right? Uh, the early ones had what's called a, an M7, and then it was changed later on to what's called a K47 style capsule. All those elements and you know a bit of luck uh, from the designers of the U47, how they all kind of came together, made for one of the most musical sounding uh, vocal microphones ever made. Um, it has a rich and robust low frequency response, uh, a full low mid, very solid. Uh, it's got an airy response to it in sort of the 10K range. And it's not overly bright. It's actually uh, typically, although they vary, a little bit on the darker side uh, as microphones go, but famous for male vocals. So anywhere where you want to bring out uh, the chest elements of a vocal um, and bring uh, an air and presence to a lower voice or lower uh, source, uh, it's one of the best microphones that you can choose. People think of Frank Sinatra, they think of uh, uh, Ray Charles vocals, all these, these great sort of vocal tones and great voices that were recorded with uh, U47s. Aretha Franklin, for instance, used one quite a bit. Um, but other sources it's great on, you know, almost anything really. It's, it's hard to find a source that, uh, that U47 doesn't sound great on. Usually it's a technical limitation, so there is no pad in the design. Um, so it doesn't take super high SPL sources up close, uh, as well as some designs, some later designs. Um, but strings, um, you know, drum overheads in certain cases where maybe somebody's playing a little on the quieter side, horns, it, it room mics, it's really hard to find a source that the U47 doesn't flatter. You know, also, it, it is a multi-pattern mic, so you have uh, both cardioid and omni polar pattern options uh, with the U47. The Omni setting is often sort of overlooked, but for room mics or for any situation where you actually want to eliminate some of the proximity effect, maybe close miking an acoustic instrument, acoustic guitar, something like that in a, in a nice sounding room, because certainly when you use it in Omni, you're going to get more influence from the room. Um, but that's an element to explore with the U47, the Omni response, because it's fantastic as well. So here in front of me, I have a sequential pair of U47s that are uh, from the mid-1950s. This is one of the cleanest pairs that we've ever seen. Uh, just recently came in. Um, very little use. You can see they look almost like brand new. They have the original capsules, VF14M tubes. Everything is completely original. Um, power supply, you can see almost nowhere on the um, on the leather handle, which oftentimes are sort of falling apart. So Vintage King, you know, we're known as experts uh, with vintage microphones, and we've sold a lot of them over the years. Uh, looking back at our records, we've sold just around 300 U47s. Given that there's only 6,500 ever made, and who knows exactly how many of those are still alive and sort of around, um, we've certainly touched, you know, a large portion of the U47s currently on Earth. So when we initially get a U47, um, Unfortunately, many of them are not in pristine condition, such as this pair. This pair is a complete anomaly, extremely rare. Most uh, were used heavily in commercial settings over the years. So generally, they're not in the best of condition when we first receive them. Um, our job, obviously, is to ensure that when they leave our doors and, and are resold to one of our, our customers, that they're in perfect working condition, both functionally and as, and as close to uh, you know, excellent cosmetic condition as we can get them utilizing uh, uh, vintage parts wherever possible. So Vintage King is the only place on earth, at least that I know of, that you can purchase a vintage microphone that's been vetted as far as a good candidate for restoration, fully restored by an expert uh, mic technician, and then includes a one-year warranty as all our microphones do. Uh, we have a 30-day return policy, so if the microphone in your setting in your studio or on your voice or your source it isn't a good fit, you can return it for a full refund. 
Uh, and further, if you decide to keep it, anything goes wrong with it, excluding the, the, the tube and the capsule or any sort of accidental uh, damage, of course, um, we will fix it free of charge for a period of one year from the time that it shipped. Many of our clients are searching for vintage microphones and oftentimes uh, the premium examples of microphones will sell before they actually hit our website because there's such a high amount of demand. So if you are in search of a vintage mic flagship, something like a U47, U67, M49, or an AKG C12, Telefunk and Elam 251, any of these extremely desirable microphones, please give us a call and talk with one of our sales reps. If there's specific requirements that you have for a vintage mic as far as condition level, price, um, tonality, these are all things that we can work with you to find an example that suits exactly what you need.